Alright, look, maybe you've considered starting your own dropshipping store, but there's still one question out there. What do you sell? Hello again world, Zach Hall here to give you an overview on what you should sell on your store and how you can find those products. So not knowing what to sell in your store is usually the first major roadblock that new businesses in the dropshipping space run into. And that's completely fine and normal. Um, the process just gets significantly easier as you continue to stay in this space and when you utilize some of the tools I'm going to reveal to you towards the end of this video. So make sure you stick around. Also, we're doing these videos on a very regular basis, so make sure to subscribe to the channel here, drop a thumbs up, leave a comment if you got a question, turn on that bell so you always get notified when we have new videos coming out. So what do you sell? The very first question I always ask myself when I'm looking for new products to throw on my stores is, would I buy this product myself? It's pretty straightforward, you know, if you're not going to buy something or you don't find interest in something, I guess it doesn't necessarily mean nobody else is going to buy it, but it's going to be a very good indication on how that product's going to go for you. Because if you don't have the interest to actually make that product work for your store, then you're not going to put in the time to grow that thing and make it something that people are actually going to buy, right? You're not going to put in the time that's necessary to make that thing a winning product. So if you're not going to buy it and you don't find interest in it yourself, it's never going to work for you. Okay, second thing I always touch on when I'm putting new products on my stores, what products are selling well for your competitors? It's always a great place to start when you're looking to put new products on your store. You see, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's been a circle forever for a reason, right? You don't got to make it a square. So if your competitors are selling a certain product, they're probably doing it for a reason, right? So you don't have to be the oddball out because you're just essentially going to try something new that's not going to work. They're selling that product at that price with that description and everything for a reason. So instead of reinventing the wheel, okay, because I'm not telling you to go out and copy your competitors, I'm telling you to go out and emulate your competitors. Another essential point to the lifeblood of your product here is you have to have a demand. If there's not a demand for the product, there's nobody out there to sell to. Just because underwater basket weaving material sounds cool doesn't mean anybody out there is actually going to buy it from you. Now one of the awesome tools that you've probably heard of before that can help you gauge on if there's a demand for anything is Google Trends. Google Trends is amazing. I mean, it's a free based product, first of all, from the biggest database in the entire world of information. You're actually able to get in there and source the demand for just about anything you want to see. So what you do with Google Trends, we're going to be going over this pretty heavy in future videos, is you type in search terms on what people are searching or specific keywords and you can gauge the volume of interest and in searches of that specific term or keyword, which indirectly is going to tell you the demand of that product. So if I want to search footballs through Google Trends, I can look that term up, football, and I can see on a scale of 0 to 100 how relevant the term for football is right now at any given time, whether I want to look at today's results, last year's results, past five years. I mean, we can look at massive amounts of information to gauge on if there's a certain demand time for this product or not. So Google Trends is absolutely essential to your success with dropshipping. And if you don't have a product that people can actually get behind and buy on your website, then your dropshipping store is going to be dead in the water before it even starts. Doesn't matter how good your sales funnel is, doesn't matter how good your marketing is, nobody's going to buy from you. This is why I label it as one of the three important pillars to your success online with Shopify. It's one of the big things when you're looking for products to put on your dropshipping store. You have to recognize on if the product's a seasonal product, is it a product that sells all year round? Is it just a trend? Because seasonal products, they only sell during specific times of the year, right? So right now when I'm recording this, it's September. Next month in October is Halloween. So Halloween products are only going to sell around the Halloween time of year. Like it's pointless to advertise Halloween decorations when it's March. So just recognize if the product is seasonal, is it a year-round product, is it a trend, or is it a fad? So a good example of like a trending product would be those fidget spinners. I still hear people talk about this all the time where they're going to get into the e-commerce space and they're going to sell fidget spinners and they're going to be a millionaire within a month off of it. Most times people that don't know anything about e-commerce. But products have a lifespan on them where they're going to run out of demand. Doesn't mean they're going to stop selling forever, it just means they're going to stop selling like they're going out of style. Not really a good product to get into nowadays unless maybe you're buying them to give them away because you branded it with your company's name. 
That's an example of what I would do if I was selling fidget spinners. And you can look up on Google Trends there, that'll back it up. So Google Trends, awesome, awesome, powerful tool to use. So you need to avoid products that are trademarked, highly regulated, banned, blacklisted by payment processors, illegal, and immoral. It's never a good practice to sell products that are morally wrong, where you're advertising to people that they could save 50% on their energy bill, or you take this miracle cream and rub it on your legs and it's gonna cure varicose veins. Because that stuff will catch up with you and you're gonna get completely shut down, Better Business Bureau will come after you. You can make the same amount of money dropshipping the legit way, if not more, than you can doing it the wrong way. So just make sure you're not selling any products that fall under those categories, otherwise you're gonna be cooking up a recipe for disaster. Now I can't give you a list right now of products that are selling because the demand is constantly changing. And obviously you guys are watching this video at all different points of time, so there's always a different demand out there for products. So what's trending right now is not going to be trending when you're watching the video. But when you're looking for products, there's a consistent static thing that's never going to change. You just have to verify that there is a demand for the product before you consider selling it. So, some of the tools that I use to actually gauge the demand and to determine if I'm going to sell that product on my store are things like Amazon Movers and Shakers, ShopInspect.com, WatchCount.com, I'll explain these in a second too a little bit, AdSpy, and just the traditional ways. Like I'll watch what people are actually buying when I'm at retail stores, or what are people sharing on Facebook, or what are my friends talking about. See, so many people fail to people watch and actually see how people are thinking and what people are doing when you can learn a lot about what's in demand just by watching what's happening around you. So Google Trends, obviously we went over that tool, I use that one. Shop Inspect is a website where you can plug in Shopify stores and you can see what other people are selling based around certain keywords. So shopinspect.com is a website that I use quite frequently actually with my products where you can type in keywords like football and you can see stores that are selling footballs and it'll tell you like how much revenue they're generating. You can determine what the average profit is on it and everything by you know just sourcing what the product costs and then subtracting it, right? So you can determine if it's a profitable product, are there a significant amount of people buying it? You can look at multiple different stores that are selling that. It's like an API through Shopify. So when it's actually direct data from Shopify, so very, very powerful tool to use, shopinspect.com. I have a video, um, again, I'm gonna have videos on all of these going over every single tool. So make sure you go and check those out after this as well. But it's a very powerful tool to use because it sources the demand live time for you on just about anything you're gonna search. Amazon movers and shakers, directly through amazon.com, right? Amazon. It's no secret, it's the biggest online marketplace in the world. I actually think it's the biggest marketplace in the world. So where's the most data in the world on what people are buying? Directly in Amazon. And you can break things down by the category and see what's in demand in every single category. Like what are the top 100 products that people are buying? What's shaking and moving the market? So a very powerful tool to use to see what people are buying and what's on the uptrend. Watchcount.com. Another awesome free tool that I use that interfaces directly to eBay.com. Now I use this tool because eBay is the largest drop shipping platform in the world. Everybody and their sister drop ships through eBay, right? Most people that are in the Shopify space started off with eBay. I know I did. Watch Count does is it shows you within any category or based on the keywords that you want to search, what is the top watched product based on the keyword or the category that you entered? So you can see lifetime what people are watching the most, which obviously if it has the most watches means that people have the most interest in this product. Watch count is another awesome way that you can source demand for products when you're looking to put new stuff on your store. And a lot of these tips aren't necessarily just for Shopify dropshipping. I mean, these websites and tips really would work for you on wherever you're selling. I mean, you could be selling on WooCommerce. You could be selling directly on eBay. Uh, these are all awesome tools that you can use to find products based on wherever you're selling at. AdSpy.com, this is my second favorite tool that I use and it can be pretty expensive. I believe it's $150 a month. Uh, it's not absolutely vital to your success, but it does save you a stupid amount of time. 
So AdSpy interfaces with Facebook and Instagram, and you can plug in so many different things to break down and bring up ads that are being ran on Facebook and Instagram, just to show a demand on what's happening on Facebook and Instagram around what you're searching. So you can search ads on there between Facebook and Instagram, and it'll show you demographics on how old the people are that are seeing the ads, and other things like what countries are they in. So you can take all that stuff and you can utilize that to really save yourself a lot of time, money, and effort when you're running your ads. So if you see an ad on AdSpy that has high engagement, high likes, high comments, high shares, and it's been running for over a month, then you can make the judgment that it's a profitable product and a profitable ad because that's the only reason somebody's still running it. So you can take that product and list it on your own store since the products are generic, they're not branded, like it's a product anybody can sell. You can run an ad with similar ad copy that you know is already going to work because it's already been proven to work. Like we said before, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, just emulate it. That's pretty much it for the overview of finding products. Next video, we're going to be talking about the third pillar, which is marketing. Make sure you stick around and watch that one because I'm going to be giving away some of my top secrets on how I've created very, very high performing ads. Also, make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Share this video with somebody who you want to see be successful in the drop shipping space. And like always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below, and I'll try my very best to get those questions answered for you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.